This is my studio, and I'm tired of going 37 miles per hour. So that's why I got this. And that's why in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Bluetooth Dauntless. Let's get it. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to remove your seat from your studio. As I'm removing the seat from my studio, I just wanna thank you all for over 100 subscribers. This is crazy to me because I just started YouTube. Also, thank you for over 120 likes and almost 8,000 views on my first video. That's just crazy. Thank you guys. Now that you have the seat off of your studio, what you're going to, want to do is look for a little white cable like this. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your dongle and plug it into that. If the white dongle isn't in the front like that, what you're going to want to do is remove the shield. So in order to do that, what you're going to need to do is unscrew these two screws on the on this side and there should be another two on the other side once you've taken out the screws you can remove the shield and you can access the controller then you'll be able to take the white cable out once you've plugged in your dongle you want to go into the app store and look up the far driver app this app is going to be the app that helps you tune your bike once you open up the app you're going to want to enable bluetooth once you've enabled bluetooth you're going to want to click on the bluetooth icon once you've done that, then you're going to want to click on this wand icon. Once you've clicked on it, then you're going to want to click connect and then bound. Once you do that, then you're going to want to copy all these settings. Also want to give a big thanks to Riding with Junior. I'll have his channel linked below, but he definitely helped me out with trying to figure out this far driver stuff. Once you're finished, make sure you click save. Once all the settings are done to your bike, you can remove the Bluetooth dongle. While recording this bit, I realized that the bike was really dirty, so I decided to clean it up a little bit. Real quick, I just want to give a special thanks to Max in the last video for supplying me with the dongle. Appreciate it, wouldn't be able to make this video without him. Also just want to give another quick shout out to Asher's Hood, I'll have his channel linked below, but he gave me this really cool foam holder. It matches the uh, colors of my bike, which is really cool, and you can just screw it on right here. It's pretty simple and easy to use. After I finished cleaning up the bike, what I wanted to do is add the front fender to my bike, because even though it looks really silly, I was going to need it because I was riding in the dirt a lot, and mud was flying up on my face, so I needed to install this. Run that back turbo. Run that back turbo. Speed it up. I also added some WD-40 to the chain because it was really squeaky. The bike was looking really goofy with the front fender on, but it was time to take it out for a spin. All right, guys, we're about to race the two RTRs, the modded racer, and the studio. Yeah, you too. Oh. Colin got last. <laughs> Yeah, the freaking car. I know, I didn't want to clip your <laughs> Bro, I, the dongle actually does something, Jack. The is faster than what you think. Just rip all through that. <laughs> Yeah, 
Alright guys, so just to wrap up what I've noticed from this Bluetooth dongle so far, the stock 2DO comes with a top speed of 37 miles per hour, but with the Bluetooth dongle it upgrades it to 42 miles per hour, which is the highest I've reached so far with the dongle. No torque upgrades unfortunately that I've noticed, but there is a higher top speed, so that's definitely something. You can tell the 2DO is cool just by the ducks going to go look at it. Look at that.